Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Survivor Now podcast. My name is Randy Bruce, and I am not joined by Abraham today. Abraham is in Dallas enjoying the Bryson Wynn Presents event, but I have someone who is just as good, if not better. I am joined by Season 43 Castaway. Mariah Young is back on the show, otherwise known as, you know, I'm just going to start announcing you as the Rainbow Queen. Oh, I love that. Thank you. How are we doing, Mariah? (laughs) I'm so good. I'm happy to be here. I'm excited. I'm really excited to be taking Abraham's job. Just kidding. No, uh, Abraham, we talked about that before the podcast. I pretty much offered her the job. She said, yeah, I'm taking it. So, Abraham, (laughs) I appreciate everything you've done for the podcast. (laughs) We can talk about it offline. Abraham, text me. (laughs) (laughs) I'm actually, you know what, that's going to be one of our special features for our viewers. Uh, The job as the co-host is going to be on the line in a fire-making challenge. (laughs) And it's going to be a live fire-making challenge between Mariah and Abraham. (laughs) Oh my gosh! No, but then I would lose. <laughs> oh, you know what? Are you are you saying you're not great at making fire, Mariah? Is that what's I'm happening? good at making fire? I'm just not sure if I'm better than Abraham. <laughs> like, to be honest, I All don't right. know. This summer, fire making showdown. It's happening. No, okay. we well, have to it, actually do that now. <laughs> hey, we did something uh, last time as well. Every time her cat jumps up, you got to take a shot. Who? <laughs> Is this the same troublemaker last time? I think it was the other one. I have two black cats who are both very needy. And you saw they were like nowhere to be found. But now they just they want to be on the show. My, my cat. She, she wants to do the fire making challenge. <laughs> my cat literally was walking at my feet right when we went on air. Now she's over here. She's my live audience. Aww. So I might. If she comes back over, I might. We might just have like two cats on screen all night there, long. That would be so iconic. I would then have to like screenshot this, like, and make this like my phone saver of us holding our cats. But I think they showed up because they heard it was a job opening. They're like, no, I want to host the survivor now. <laughs> Hey, I'm sure Mariah is getting to the point where it's like, you got to pay rent. I'm more than willing to offer. Like, if I do a podcast (laughs) with Pat, could you imagine we'd end up being the most iconic Survivor podcast of all time? I feel like we, you need to rename your podcast now Survivor Now with Cats. (laughs) With Cats. Survivor Now with Cats. (laughs) Is it too late to edit the thumbnail? Instead of having just you as the guest, I'll have you and then a picture. Me and the Cats next time. (laughs) Next time. Maybe I'll put them in tiny. Buffs. <laughs> Stop. Okay, we're gonna be here all night talking if about, talk cats. about cats. That is true. <laughs> but if you guys are watching, go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. Yes, we have so much to comp uh to talk about tonight. And if you want to interact with myself or Mariah, get in our live chat. I like to call it ancient voices. It's fitting yes. for survivor. We got some <laughs> people in the chat, uh full of I always mess up your name. A uh, floret. I can't say it. Flowery. Floria. Mariah, That's what do you think? I think it's Floria. Let's Floria. go with Floria. Can you let us know, Floria? Did we get it right? Is it Floria? It's, it's got to really be. I really hope we Floria. did. I love that name. But uh, she says hello, or they say hello. Uh, Kimberly, <laughs> hey. Uh, and then Floria. Oh my God, this season is off the hooks. It started yes. off slow, but wow, it's a smoke show now. No thanks. That's <laughs> a secret. Uh, so yeah, it's it has really taken off. I mean, we were talking about this after the whole Yanu, you know, first four episodes. Last week was a good episode. This yes. was a great episode. I will say that Rob Sessanino, I'll shout him out here. He tweeted and said he thinks this was the episode of the season. So Mariah, before we get into analyzing and talking about everything that we witnessed tonight and kind of the dynamics that we saw, what Mm -hmm. did you think of this episode? Because there was a lot to take in. I also think it was the episode of the season. You know, I go back and forth between this whole murgatory situation um, because sometimes I just, I'm ready for the merge to happen. But it is just so interesting to see the dynamics and everything that happens when you divide the, when you divide them in half and put them on two separate beaches. I feel like it's just so, it makes it so much more intriguing. And we even got like the opportunity to have that heartwarming moment. I always love it when like those heartwarming moments like with Ben and Kenzie happens. I always feel like 
some people hate those moments but for me that's always like oh my god that you don't realize how that makes the game so much more interesting and even harder but i love this episode i thought it was amazing and i, I thought it's so spicy <laughs> oh it was spicy and i thought i agree that i thought this was a fantastic episode the thing for me is like we were talking last week about like that whole mergatory some people hate it some people like it i'm kind of in the middle like i'm okay yeah. with it i love the earn the merge I wish it didn't come down to a rock draw. Like, I think that should be a point where we have like people choose like a schoolyard pick. Cause that would yeah. create more social dynamics, but here I'm okay with the rock draw here because mm -hmm. it's like, these are the people you got work your way in this situation. You know, both tribes are voting off. Two people are going home. I thought that was interesting. I thought the groups that we got were interesting. On one hand, you had Maria and Charlie and then four NAMI members, but all the NAMI members wanted to take shots at one another. And then in and the other group. such a rough commodity. Oh, <laughs> such a, I mean, it was chaos. I posted something. It was actually going back to the cats. I posted this one <laughs> gif that I found of like a cat in a war helmet <laughs> while war was going all around it. And I was like, this is Charlie because everyone's just walking up to Charlie who should be the easy vote and being yep. like, they're taking shots. And then on the other hand, we have Yanu, a tribe who was up there for, is this the worst tribe in the history of the and show? And now they're basically on top. It's yes. insane. And even, even the whole, the storyline of Kenzie, because there was even a moment, I feel like this got really glazed over. It was in the editing a little bit. And I feel like a lot of people didn't dive deep into it, but there was a moment when Kenzie was kind of on the outside of the three. Like there was a moment when Tip and Q were even considering sending her home before Banu. And the only reason they sent Banu home was because he kept putting his foot in his mouth. But Kenzie <laughs> was on the outs of the three for a moment. And she she never, she didn't know it because they never revealed it to her because they ended up getting rid of Banu. But now she's kind of like coming into her own and she's finding her footing and she won the immunity today. And it's just really beautiful to watch her kind of like bloom into like this this new era of her game. So I'm excited for her. I think she's she's got a lot more that she's going to do before the season's out. <laughs> you know what's really interesting about that point as well? You brought up the fact that Kenzie was on the outs. But, and we're going to get to more of Q later because there was a lot of talk about people are starting to realize like this is not Q survivor boot camp. Like right. we don't have to play in that way. But what was interesting is Q's main alliance members, Tiffany, who he has always worked with. Mm -hmm. and, oh, there's the troublemaker in the back. Yeah, there's, there's the other one. So, so, <laughs> Tiff, yeah, so Tiffany, who has always been his number one ally, and then Kenzie, who, as you stated, Mariah, was on the outs at one point. They're mm -hmm. starting to get to the point where they're like, why is it always who you want to go home? Yeah. Like, yeah. like let's I'm team surprised up they're that. just now realizing that. He's been abrasive since the beginning of the game. I think the reason why it's frustrating now is because they're intermingled with the other tribes. They didn't realize it at first because they always been a three. They already kind of had the pecking order in place but now that there's opportunity to work with Sega, to work with um who's the other tribe nami. they're nami right no oh no yeah and nami the other tribe now that they have those opportunities they're just kind of like hold on wait and they're realizing it and i'm like that's been happening guys y'all had y'all's blinders on the whole time well, now that we're on the topic of Q, we can start off. We're going to be jumping around, by the way, uh, to some of these big moments. Jay adds in the chat. Uh, Ayo, hello, Jay. Hello, hello. Hey, Jay. Um, so <laughs> the, the thing with um, kind of Q this episode, we saw it right off the bat. When, before the challenge happened, we saw him pull Charlie aside after Charlie went to Venus and said, hey, I was the one to vote for you. Like, there's so much to unpack this episode. I'm like, that's yeah. another topic we need to talk on. But he pulls Charlie aside and goes, why are you saying this? You can't do this in this game. And that, how many times have we heard Q say that this season of like, you can't do this. This is not mm -hmm. how you play it. And mm -hmm. it's starting to get to the point, me as a viewer, I'm even looking at it like, okay, is this Survivor or like has Q already figured out how Survivor is supposed to be played in a sense? Because this is how he kind of leads these conversations on is like he's almost trying to teach everybody how to play Q's game. He even said this episode about Tim. Are you playing the Sega game mm -hmm. or are you playing Q's game? And I'll say this. 
it's annoying in general, but I understand that that's his game because there's also been other people in the past, like to, to be honest, I mean, I, I don't hope I don't get flack for this, but like it was the Boston Rob show, like Boston Rob, it was his game. Yep. You either play my game or you're out. And I think that the reason why it's so frustrating for us to see Q play that type of game is because it's kind of like, well, who the heck are you? You know, like we're still getting to know him as a player, but it's not that we, we've never seen players like that. We've seen iconic players like that before, but I think that now that we kind of have a, a, a an archive of people who play the game like that, players get frustrated with players like that because they, 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 they know that type of player. So I just think it's a matter of now that people are privy to that type of gameplay, they just automatically don't like it. Whereas though in the old days, that was like something new and intriguing and like, okay, this person seems like they know what they're doing. They seem like they could really be a leader. They seem like they know what they're talking about. They're teaching me how to play the game because back then people did come on the show and they kind of almost had to be coached by people yeah. who, who were, who knew the game. Um, and it was kind of like, exciting to have somebody like that on your side whereas though now if you're playing survivor you're not telling me how to play survivor i'm on here because i know how to play yeah so everybody's think, a super fan huh i said yeah everybody's a super fan everyone's no a super to fan exactly so it's annoying now but there was a time when it wasn't <laughs> well i mean mariah everybody is agreeing with your take we got uh <laughs> nikki in the chat the q game is annoying Jay adds in exactly Mariah. Boston Rob is who I thought of. And then Kimberly adds on Q is very Boston Rob uh, cliff notes. Uh, but, but, but the thing is with Boston Rob, and I think this is something that kind of differs. Boston Rob had his plan of like, this is who's going home tonight. We saw yeah. that well, this episode as well. And this is something that once they pointed it out in the episode, I was like, oh my gosh, he's been doing this all season. Mm -hmm. Hugh likes to flip. And something that happened that flips his vote immediately. And Kinsey said it in a, in a confessional tonight where she was like, okay, one second you're coming over here and you're saying, okay, Ben is the vote, Ben, Ben, Ben. And you're driving that in. It needs to be Ben. And I'm like, okay, cool. I'll do Ben. Mm -hmm. And then 10 minutes later, you're coming back. No, it's gotta be Tim. Tim is crazy. Mm -hmm. And as a player, obviously I haven't been out there. I haven't played the game, but as a player, Mariah, that has to be frustrating. It's like, look, I'm doing what you want. And now you're but stop changing, stop fire. changing your mind and, and flipping back and forth. I think sure it is frustrating and I wouldn't want to play with a player like that. I don't think, but I also on the flip side of that understand, I think he's just a sporadic player. I think he goes off of his gut and I think he goes off of vibes. So the moment he hears something shifty, he's like, oh no, 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 no which works for some players. That doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to enjoy playing with him. Like, I feel like it works for Q, but it doesn't work for other people, if that makes sense. Because people who listen to their gut, who's intuitive, who goes off of vibes, they tend to get farther in the game. But it bites you in the foot in the long run, and you probably won't win because people don't like playing with people like that. But it does get you a little bit further when you listen to your gut and when you are sporadic like that. But it doesn't help you build those relationships and friendships you need in the end to actually get like those votes or to stay in the game to the final tribal council. So I get it on both sides, kind of like devil's advocate. <laughs> I mean, it, it could come back to bite him in the butt. Like you say, build these relationships. Even if Q does make it to the in, end of the game and he's sitting there telling his story to the to the jury. I mean, if you look at if if it's not Kenzie and Tiffany, I mean, he could really back himself in a corner. If yeah. it is Kenzie and Tiffany sitting next to him at that final three, then it's like, what can he own up? I did this. I did this. Kenzie and Tiffany can be like, what do you mean? Because we were right there with you. Yep. And then mm -hmm. if they're on the jury, that could be even worse because then they could be like, look, everything Q's done in, in the game, that's been right with me and Kenzie. So mm -hmm. like, he, he could back himself in a corner. And then uh, Frank, this is this is a tough one. Q is more like Philip with Boston Rob's <laughs> rule book. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, like no. Philip. I, I could definitely see it. Well, I mean, okay. To end like the Q talk, Mariah, does he have a reason to be frustrated? We we started off the episode with a very shocking moment of, you know, everyone was expecting Venus to go off the deep end and be because she got that one vote against her. 
She immediately says, I know who voted for me. It was Soda. And as the viewers, we were like, oh, this is awkward because Soda didn't vote. Soda tells her, look, I didn't vote for you. That wasn't me. You need to figure out who did. The funny thing is, I love that Soda was like, it, it probably was Mo who voted for you. Mo couldn't have vote, voted <laughs> for Venus because she played her shot in the dark. So that's mm -hmm. not even an option. Uh, but so it was kind of funny seeing the dynamic between Soda and Venus, which played out this episode. But Charlie just ends up owning up, which was really interesting. That was odd. And I, I don't think that that was a gameplay move. I think it was an emotional move. Ooh, that's and a good I, way to put it. I get it. I totally get it. It is so hard. because And I had to say, when, when those moments happen, I 1000% get it because that's the type of player I was. I had a, such a hard time separating the game from like just being human, from just being like, wow, I don't want this person who actually didn't do rope for you to take the heat, like, and that crave to just, you know, want to do the right thing or want to be kind, you know, and then also playing the game. So I think it was just a moment where Charlie didn't have his game hat on. Like, I felt like tribal council was over. He kind of turned the lights off and now he was just being Charlie. He wasn't really being like Charlie, the survivor player. He was just being Charlie. So I don't think that was gameplay at all. I don't really think he was, he had a strategic mind mindset in that moment. I think it just messed up and he even owned up to it on the beach when he was talking to Q. He's like, you're right, dude, I messed up. But then he did go back and say that he was just saying that, but I think he messed up. I don't think he should have said anything either, but I mean, it worked out in his favor, I guess. <laughs> it did work out for him, but man, wouldn't that have been fun to see Venus like tear that beach down, trying to figure out who who voted for her. oh my but you know the interesting thing is she still tore the beach apart <laughs> like, <It is> even, <laughs> even with that knowledge she still that encounter okay i need to know how you felt about with that encounter with her and maria like what like ah that's so crazy okay mariah let me just say first off thank you i want to thank Liz, yes, Liz is a castaway this season. Very unfortunate that she's been getting like a purple edit and we haven't yeah. seen much of her. But yeah. I want to thank Liz personally and <laughs> Charlie and Maria for sending Soda home. Even though I love Soda, I love you, Soda. I really do. But my girl Venus is still in the game because I just want you to know, Mariah, I am like, one of the biggest Venus stands. Okay, season. so your Venus stand is she your winner pick? She's not. Hunter's okay. my winner pick. He was okay, my winner gotcha. Pick. But but you stand Venus. I Ven I think I stand Venus, and I think we might have spoke about this last time. She gives an old classic player feel that we have not had in a long time. Like she she Interesting. Who does she remind you of? Because she actually reminds me of Cassidy from my season. Mm. So I so the, the fact that you say she gives you old school vibes who we haven't seen in a while. When I look at Venus and I watch her gameplay, she reminds me of Cassidy. The only thing that the box she hasn't checked for me yet is challenge queen because like Cassidy was Cassidy such a wasn't. challenge queen yeah. on my season. Um but also individual immunities just started. So she could potentially raise to the top and start Yahoo in these challenges. Um, but just how um, may, I don't think Cassidy was, was ripping the beaches apart, but just like her vibe and making a staple and a name for herself and working behind the scenes and trying to get people to move in her direction. It reminds me of Cassidy just a little bit. I don't think they're, exact mirrors i don't think there's their game is super parallel to one another but definitely reminds me a little bit of one another so so week two i did something that i hate when survivor fans do and that's every gorgeous woman that goes on the show that shows a little bit of strategy they're like this is the next parvati so oh, I, oh I okay and when people do that but yeah. we do, I was already saying for the first time ever, I was comparing someone to Parv. I was like, I could see Parv. I don't see, I don't see her as Parv now. I don't see it because mm -hmm. I had a friend actually tag with who runs survivor social for us on Thursdays. She said it might've been, it might've been her boyfriend, but it was either her or her boyfriend, Ryan. And they said that she almost 
is like Courtney Yates in a sense. Okay. And I was like, I can I see that. I can I see that a little bit. She was yeah. Survivor China, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Blonde, super skinny. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I could see her being kind of like Courtney Yates, but that's why I I think I love her. Her was, I feel like, good at charming people, though. Like, she was such a charmer to the point where when she wasn't around people, people saw through it. But as soon as she approaches you, you like forgot it. She was literally like, uh, like, but, oh, it's who was it Jelensky who called, or no, it was Banu who had called Kenzie a siren. So, yeah. me, it's kind of like a siren, too, where she, like, when you're right in front of her, she kind of like mesmerizes you. But when she's far, when she's far away, you're like, danger, danger, danger. But then she's close, you're like, oh, she's so pretty and charming. And I don't think that she gives off that vibe. I don't really think that Venus gives off that vibe because when she approaches people, people are like, danger, danger. And when she's far away, we're like, danger, danger. She <laughs> well, this really is the thing, this charm is the thing Mariah. You asked me um, what I thought about the whole Maria and Venus, like kind of confrontation that happened with my boy, Charlie, just chilling in the back. What yeah. the whole thing. When Maria says, look, I'll be honest with you. When you come up on people, it's almost like you're telling them what to do and you come very aggressively instead of being, Hey, let's work together. Like, what do you mm -hmm. don't ask what I want to do? It's more like, this is what's happening. You need to do this. And you kind of back me in a sense of, uh, you, you back me up against a wall using that analogy again of like, I feel like yeah. I don't have a choice and you're forcing me to do something. I thought I got what Maria was saying. I understand. And mm -hmm. Venus is young. I don't know if I'm officially at the age that I can say that yet, but she is young. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the, so I I was also a little bit frustrated at this because I've been saying all season, somebody give my girl Venus a home. I feel yeah. like everyone is just like, she's not loyal. She's not trustworthy. And I'm sitting here, there's got to be something that I'm not seeing. And I'm someone who I do look past the edit and I try to put mm -hmm. things together of what they're not showing showing us i understand this is a a long journey that is condensed to an hour and a half a week so i'm trying to look past it but i'm like what am i not seeing because there's yet to be a moment where venus has shown that she's not loyal and she just yeah. wants to work with someone i'm saying if you if you work with venus mm -hmm. who, who says she's not going to be loyal so for me i get where maria is coming from i agree with what she says but at the mm -hmm. same time i'm like She's just looking for someone to work with her. Yeah. I don't know why everyone. And she wants to her build her own game. Yeah. Um, and I don't think that. I don't think that she has done anything. I don't think it's her actions. I think it's her approach. Like I mm. just think that she's just she's very off putting. Like Maria said, when she walks up to people, it just feels like here's your two options. Um, and I feel like that come that rubs people the wrong way because it's kind of like, well, girl, you're not kind of in the best position either. You know, I feel like maybe if she was like sitting on top and safe, had an idol, you know, had something to offer other than an idea. Like if she could offer people like, a, a, like something that works for everyone, people would be more onto it. But I just feel like people don't like it because they're just kind of like, beggars can't be choosy in a way. I don't even know if that's it, but I feel like that's why people are just so not into it. I don't know. I don't really think she's done anything. I really think it's based off of vibes and her approach. No, that's, I mean, yeah, it's definitely her approach that is rubbing people the wrong way. I will say there was a moment tonight where I was like, oh, Venus girl, this is not the, this is not what you should be saying. She was speaking with Charlie, who everyone thinks Charlie is the name. Charlie knows he's not the name because he has all these NAMI members coming to him saying, let's take a shot mm -hmm. of them, take a shot of them and stuff like that. But from what Venus knows, Charlie is the easy name to be going home. And at one point, Charlie mentions, I might just play my shot in the dark tonight. <clears throat> and Venus goes, if you're going to be talking like that, then I'm just going to stay NAMI strong. Yeah, and I thought that was a bad move because I'm like, you don't tell the probably one, you know, Tevin's not going to work with you. You mm -hmm. know, Soda's not going to work with you. So your options are 
Oh, at this point, you know, Maria, well, depending on, obviously it was after in the edit, but who knows when the talks actually happened on the island. But at this point, you know, Maria's not working with you. You've already got that feel from Maria. So your two options are Charlie and Liz to try to get a vote to go the way you want it. And you're just telling this guy who just said, I don't know, I'm a little nervous. I might play my shot in the dark. You just go, I don't know. Then I'm just going to stay Nami strong then. That kind yeah. of alienates you from Charlie because at that point, Charlie's like, damn, if she's willing to flip this quickly and go back to working Nami, you know, Nami strong, then why would I work with her? So I feel like that was the one move tonight that I was like, mm, Venus. I'm you, sure you, of, you didn't really yeah. like. I also, I'm so curious to hear, and I wonder if anyone from this season's cast uh, we'll do a podcast. Hopefully they come on your podcast. Come on, uh, <laughs> 36. Come on, Survivor now. Because I want to know if there is something that happened with Venus that we didn't see. Like, I'm very curious uh, of if there is some, like, I, it makes me think, like, if this was Jem, you know, like, the person who was, like, hiding idols and making and her whole tribe chaos. dig for it, and you guys said that we couldn't trust her, I'd be like, okay, you did make them dig for idols for a whole, an idol for a whole day, but I'm like, what did Venus do? So I am curious if there's something that's being left out of the edit that we haven't seen yet. Yeah, That'd it's definitely, insane. it's for sure something that I'm going to want to find out. I don't know if everyone saw it, something there it was funny i have to shout it out obviously something went wrong with my hand i had a thumb injury i'm resting it before my basketball season uh -huh. but i was i was taking i thought i was was going to have to shut my camera off because i was taking a drink and then i moved this down so fast while you started talking there that the water like splashed and went straight up in my eye oh, so i don't know no. if it, I don't know if the camera caught that, but I was sitting there with my contact and I was like, oh, shoot. I was like, what if I have to leave? Mariah's oh, probably no. just going to be like, all right. I would have it's brought the cats in. I would have just brought the cats in and <laughs> they would have just had to, you know, <laughs> cover for you for a while. Oh, I didn't they, see any water, though. <laughs> oh, I'm going to go back and I'm going to, it's around the 22 minute mark. I'm going to go oh, back. Oh, my gosh. You have to do back. like an instant replay now. <laughs> add, sound, might... add sound effects. It might go on the Instagram. I'm just telling you that right now. But hey, <laughs> Abraham's already lost his job. I can't lose my job to, to a cat. So I'm still here trucking along. Then it will really be Survivor Now podcast with cats. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's it. Next week's show is just going to be Mariah's two black cats side by side <laughs> breaking the episode. <laughs> and so, I have two more. So it could just be a whole, I can bring all four of them in here. <laughs> <laughs> if you can get all four of them by the end of the show, We'll make we'll end it. Line lines up. Let me see. I don't know. Only only my black ones come around during the oh, show. There. My other two stay hidden. Oh, we gotta make sure the other two become fans of the show. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Mariah, let's chat about this challenge because the challenge is something that we don't always spend a ton of time on. We do kind of look at, you know, what was the cool parts of the challenge. This was a fun one. This was like a stand-up comedy routine because Jeff said it was less like, I love the fact that they showed like, this is what happened last time we did this challenge. And it's mm -hmm. like wild waves. It's a storm. Everyone's falling off. He said it lasted a total of three minutes. And once I saw that, I love when they do flashbacks like that. Cause mm -hmm. I'm like, Oh shoot, it reminds me. And I'm like, I remember that now, but this time he said it was more like a lake. And yeah, it was. I was sitting there and I was like, before he even said it, I'm like, this is one of the lakes we have around here. It's called Raccoon Lake. Uh -huh. and I was sitting there and I was like, this looks like someone set up a challenge on Raccoon Lake. Oh, like, my gosh. Yeah. First of all, important question. Are raccoons in the area of they that are. lake? They oh are. There's Incredible. a lot of them. Uh, back to Survivor. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, it was an interesting challenge to watch because there was so much that happened. First of all, Jeff finding a way to roast Jelensky was, oh. I feel like that needs to be on a t-shirt. He said oh, it, it, it has been several minutes, which means seven. I forget exactly what he said, but I was cracking up. He and didn't then even, we had you. There, I didn't. I didn't want to cut you off. Sorry about that. Oh I, no, it, go ahead. He didn't even stop there. I that would have been something in itself for him just to go. It, you've been up there for several minutes, but then he goes on to say, uh, "From Jelinski himself, such a legend." 
And then the <laughs> castaways go, yep, a legend. And I was like, Jeff. Jeff, Jeff is in his spicy, shady era, but I am <laughs> loving it. I don't, I don't hate spicy Jeff. It, I think it's hilarious. Um, as long as he doesn't shade me. Um, <laughs> but that was iconic. The game Q started was iconic. First of all, that's a game that I play all the time. And I was confused about why he was getting upset with people and how they were breaking the rules. I was like, wait, they're playing was, correctly. So I was like, Q, what alphabet? So what he was saying for anyone watching that didn't understand is Q wanted them to be like, okay, A for whatever he said, A for Albuquerque. And then whoever goes B, B had to go A Albuquerque. B Baltimore, and then C would have to go A Albuquerque, B Baltimore, C. So Colorado. he wanted a memory game. Yes. Oh, and I'm like who that's plays the alphabet game? Okay, like that? I was confused. I was like, "Cute, what game are you playing?" I thought everyone just had to come up with a city for the letter, and if it comes to you and it's on a letter and you can't think of a city for that letter, then you're out. But it was a memory game. That's a lot harder. That's yeah, I, I yeah, didn't get that. I was like, what? I was like, what is he upset about? I was like, we're on C. I was like, that's how you play. <laughs> so my he was upset at me is, too. My favorite moment is the fact that Charlie and I picked up. I, I I have to ask Charlie sometime if I might send him a message after to see if this is actually what he meant. But I think he knew what Q wanted, and he go he steps up and he's like, oh Q Q Q, I got it, I got it, man, and then goes Baltimore. <laughs> I think he knew too. I think he knew too. I think he was just, I think he was just pulling Q's leg, but I definitely think he knew. Um, it was several things that happened. And then uh who was it? Tim goes on with the shout outs. I was like, what is happening during this challenge? I this is the one time I took notes. This is the one time because Tim also goes, What's going on, Jeff? And Jeff says, Thanks, Tim, for the shout out. And then Q interferes and he's like, Jeff. <laughs> This is how black people <laughs> this say. This is how black okay. people um ask for the time. And then Hunter asked it and then Jeff <laughs> gave the time. I was so proud. I was like, oh my God, this is it was too hilarious. Oh, the other thing that was really cool in that challenge was that save Tevin did. I was really impressed when he almost fell off and he I was I, like, what's happening? Like just reenacting it there. I was trying to reenact it and <laughs> you did I, a good job. <laughs> I couldn't make the save. Like I had my foot up in the air and then I came back down. Like I couldn't even do that. And I and I will say as well, Hunter's comment about like Jeff goes at one point, he's like, You've been up there for like 20 minutes. Or oh, something. and he said the and, time lapse. Yeah, yeah he said this is really where you really the appreciate it. Uh, that, I think that was a juicy challenge. It was a lot of like quirky comments in there and really interesting. They don't do that too often. But I guess, honestly, the reason why I think today's challenge was so comical, I think that's an testament to how calm it was it, out in, on the water or the lake, Raccoon Lake, are we calling it there? <laughs> that it must have been the most docile challenge ever if they were adding all all that comedic flair nothing was happening it was probably just like super calm waters everyone was still and then just fell so i think that's why that part was so funny <laughs> the only complaint that i have and it's a small one mm -hmm. everyone in the comments are going to be like oh my gosh randy always has to find something to complain about the only complaint and they would have been up there all day <clears throat> but i feel like at, at times and Jeff has said in the past, he doesn't want, it's not fun for him to be there for a seven hour, eight hour challenge. And they have, this is a much quicker game. So I get mm -hmm. why they do it. They have a schedule to keep, but I feel like they really rushed the challenge. They were like 10 minutes in, move up to the top. Okay. 10 more minutes in. Now you have to go to one foot. I was like, Jeff, let's let these people. There, wanna... was, there was a 30 minute mark, right? Which was, was it the 30 minute mark? Okay. I might they, did, they did do one 30 minute mark, but I can't. That I was think the when they foot. went to the top before they switched to the one foot, that's when they were up there for 30 minutes. Yeah. Okay, okay. So that makes it was one better. 30 minute. Yeah. I, was I like, think the yeah, beginning might have been 10, and but they did eventually bump it up to 30. They also had two tribal councils to do, which I'm sure played into the time. But I was like, Jeff, let's have these people sit up there for an hour. And then Five, I, oh the my hour, gosh. Do you Let's remember those days? Show. I'm trying to, I just, as soon as you said that, it just made me think of like old school Survivor 
when out and i did see a twitter post i can't remember who said it so shout out to you if you made this tweet um or are we calling an x now what do you call an x post i don't well, know okay <laughs> an, an x i don't know okay an, an yeah. x i like that i, no, I that was, was that was really eeks. bad erase <laughs> cut that out or wait this is live okay oh, so wait. anyhow um <laughs> so Someone said, remember the days when the challenge went on so long that Jeff would start to like entice you to try to drop this out with like food items times. and advantages. This is the perfect time to entice them. Bring a pizza out. Like, yeah, this is the perfect type of challenge. Just something uh, to think on production. What I would love the most is when he when he used to entice them with food, people would fall out and then he'd be like an advantage and then it would be like whoa the first whoa. person to hop in gets the advantage those were were the days and i thought that that also added a lot more to the dynamic because really, then everyone's looking like who's jumping for the advantage oh you don't trust me you feel like you need it oh you hopped out for the pizza and you you let me work for the immunity yeah it was, was definitely increasing like tension and, and adding different layers that was really cool too <laughs> no i miss those days so much and mariah i have to ask what did you think of the glorious immunity necklace with the geckos on it the red one oh it was so pretty the geckos made me really ex excited and if you didn't know red is actually my favorite color um so is that a red like chair you're sitting on right there uh -huh. It is a red chair. <laughs> Everyone's like, oh, it's such a favorite color. It's rainbow. And I'm like, well, I mean, it is. But like, technically, it's like a collection of colors. But like, I do, in fact, love red the most. So I, I do love it. your favorite color was yellow. Nothing. You, you thought mine was yellow? Oh, it's because I wear a lot of yellow because of Baca. My tribe yeah, is yellow. Yeah. So <laughs> yellow. I, had, I, I was going to say yellow has a special place in my heart, but then again, so does blue, purple, green, orange, whatever. They all have a special place. <laughs> but I love the immunity necklace, but nothing beats. I can't remember what season it was. I just remember it was Tyson and it was feathers and it was rainbow and he wore it on his head. <laughs> nothing beats that immunity necklace, AKA slash hat. Like I was like, Oh my gosh, if I was ever adorned with that upon my head after winning an individual immunity challenge, I would like forever be okay with life. Like it oh. would just, no more worries ever. <laughs> She'd be, I mean, you would instantly be like, Jeff, you know what? The game can end here. I've got yeah. what I wanted. We're done. I actually won the, the million. Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> the game's nice. over. Tyson, such a legend. We also have to put it up, up there for our queens who won this challenge. Kenzie barely beating yes. Tiffany. Mariah beating Tevin after his incredible save. Uh, sorry, not Mariah. Maria. Maria, thank <laughs> you. Uh, so hey, props to the queens for doing that. Two huge wins. But we've got a lot more to talk about. We've got a lot of drama to get into what led to the two eliminations tonight. We're going to take a super quick break. And when we come back, I will break it all down with Mariah and talk about what led to tonight's shocking eliminations. My name is Jonah Fielko, and I'm the CEO of Bracketology.tv, fantasy sports for reality television. We offer fantasy games for shows like The Bachelor, Survivor, Big Brother, RuPaul's Drag Race, and Counting. You start by creating a community. Within your community, you can create a fantasy league for each show that you want to play fantasy games for. Within the league, you can choose up to three of our four game types, and our most popular is the Advanced League. Choose a team of contestants, and depending on what they do and say during the episode, that's how your team will gain or lose points each week. We also have elimination style games like our confidence pool. This is where you choose how confident you are that each contestant will survive elimination that week. And we've also got March Madness style brackets. Come back a couple hours after the episode to check your scores and watch you climb the leaderboard. Bracketology is free to play, so grab your friends, your family, your coworkers, and head to bracketology.tv for more info. 
Hope your guys' fantasy teams are going great. I know today I had, I think I, I definitely had Kinsey. So I won, I, I think I had Kinsey and Maria. So I think both my fantasy people won. Whoa. So yeah, I'm, I'm feeling on top of the world. But You're good at this. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying. I'm actually back this year. I'm like one, I'm like 154th place or something. So we're trying to climb the leaderboard. But Mariah, we have so much to talk about here with, in terms of how these votes got to where they ended up being at. And I, I think we can split this into the two tribes. We can talk about who they voted off and then we'll go into the other strategy and who they voted off. So let's start with that first tribe that had to go back to Sega beach. And so you're looking at, I didn't write this down. So bear with me, Tim, Ben Hunter and the Yanu three is mm -hmm. who we're talking about here. And this was interesting. We already talked about the Q stuff, but it looked like at first Ben was the name getting thrown out. And it was really interesting because Q goes to Tim and Tim mm -hmm. was the one who's like, no, we need to get Hunter out. And he has every right to say this. Hunter is a beast at challenges. We might not get this opportunity again, but that causes Q to be like, we have this journey six that I plan on staying loyal to. Tim seemed like he was really willing to throw away that journey six because of Hunter's threat level in a, in a sense. And he really talked himself into going home tonight. Mm -hmm. I also feel like it's interesting that Q keeps on talking about this journey six when he also has the really tight three with Tiffany and Kenzie. I am wondering Sometimes I wonder how well thought out Q's game is or if it's just completely based off of like gut and emotion. Right, that's like, time, yeah. He's such a great gut player. And I'm like, is he really loyal to the, is he purposefully being loyal to the six and purposefully being loyal to the three? Is he just doing, playing like a, a gut game in the moment and working with the people who he feels the most comfortable with how far in advance is he actually thinking um but it just made me so interesting that that had triggered q that much to the point where he wanted to vote him off because that made me think like well how loyal are you to the six if you if if that triggered you so much that tim said that i don't i don't know i don't i'm not even sure how i feel about that and I also was, well, I guess I'm not that confused about it, but I'm wondering if there was something that Tim also did that rubbed Tiffany the wrong way because she was also gung-ho on getting him out too. Like she said, she just wanted him gone. So I'm like, that kind of made me feel like she just didn't vibe with Tim in a way. But I'm like, I don't know. That one little statement, I wasn't sure if it warranted okay it's time for you to go home it could have been like i gotta keep an eye out for you but like go home i didn't know i was surprised at that actually i think they made the wrong choice tonight mm. i think ben well honestly even though i don't want to say it because hunter my hunter is my winner pick i think this was a great night to take hunter out mm -hmm. hunter also balls of steel not mm -hmm. to play that idol because i was trying to put myself in his shoes Mm -hmm. when you're in this situation of you know you're a threat in challenges and stuff and you know that you don't have any of your alliance members there to help you out because he was the only nami person on this tribe or mm -hmm. on the team whatever you want to however you want to look at it i would have played the idol just to ensure i make it to the merge especially mm -hmm. when whoever goes home here is that last pre juror i would be like i'm making the merge whether I play my idol look stupid or not. Like I'm going mm -hmm. to make the purge. Um, so props to him because when he didn't play it, I was sitting there like, oh. I really no. did think he was going to play it too because I think um, Hunter is a great player, but he always seems unsure about his social game. So I'm like, I think he's really smart. He's great at building connections. He's great at the challenges. He actually really does have a good social game. But when it comes to like gut feeling, he's always like, I'm not sure about these people. And I'm not sure if this is really the plan. I'm just going to trust it. Um, I really thought he was going to play it. So I'm happy he didn't. Props to him too. Uh, yeah, I have no idea how he 
like I said, the nerves would have got me. So props to you, Hunter, because that could come to save him later down the road, especially if he ends up like he lost this challenge. But if he ends up going on a huge tear, which he could, mm -hmm. he still has that idol. But so I think Hunter was the right move here. It would have been a great time to get him out of the game. But if it has to be a Sega member, if you're the Yanu three looking at, I agree with the fact who, who said it. I think it was Tiffany who might have pointed this out. She would rather go Ben because Ben is a better, he seems like he can keep his cards closer to his chest mm -hmm. and a really good social player. And Tiffany says that she didn't see Tim as that big of a threat. And mm -hmm. I agree with that from what we see, what we've seen from Tim, I think this was a great moment to get out of threat and either Ben or Hunter rather than Tim, who has really struggled to get a grasp on this game this season. Also, not to mention the the real life bond that Kenzie built with Ben. I can see them flour flourishing and building them their own alliance too. Because, and I think was it Ben who said it this episode? Someone said, um, "What what is that? Was it what they said?" But someone said they were struggling to separate who they want to work with based off of who they like as a player and who they like as a person. Was it Ben or was it Kenzie? It was one of them. Cause obviously they had that very emotional moment. We haven't even touched on it when Ben had that, that like nightmare that led to a panic attack and Kenzie mm -hmm. mentioned it at tribal council. When, yep. when Ben said that he just appreciated her being there and Kenzie said, look, he's a human being. Yes. Mm -hmm. He's my competition, but like, that's who I am in real life. And that's how I'm mm -hmm. going to be out here. It was a beautiful moment of her just being, I love the fact, sorry, this is a side tangent to what you were no, saying, I Brian, but I love the fact that she stayed up and she made a fire with him. Cause I was trying yeah. to put myself in that, in his shoes. And I could see that happening to me where I wake up middle of the night, it's pitch black. And I'm kind of mm -hmm. having this, this freak out of like, where am I? Like, I can't see anything. And just mm -hmm. to have someone there, who is like, look, we'll make a fire. That fire would mean the world to me. Like just having yeah, that was super, That was my favorite moment of the episode. That was my favorite moment. I think, I think, and I'm so bad at tweeting, but I think that was the first tweet that I had made. This Wait, what'd you call it earlier? Your first Zeke? Or... Oh, my Zeke, Eeks. I don't know. Eeks. Zeke, it was your I thought, my first Zeke. <laughs> Goodness, please don't actually coin that term in real life. It would haunt me for the rest of my days. <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, that was a really sweet moment. And I appreciate those moments like that because then I feel like it makes it easier for the viewers to understand why people sometimes make emotional decisions in, in Survivor. Because it is so easy to be on the opposite side and to be sitting on your couch be like, I would have did this, I would have did that, I would have did this. Because, like, strategically, that's the smartest it move. Makes sense, yeah. But the feelings do come into play. And I feel like I can honestly see Ben and Kenzie flourishing into something like an alliance. I can even potentially see Kenzie and Ben getting closer than Kenzie and Tiffany. Um, like that's a possibility now that they have this little bond. Because you do gravitate towards people who you like as a person in real life when you're playing the game. So I can see that happening too. <laughs> no, I like the call out because I could see it happening. Like this, there is a path forward. You saw how emotional they got. And just forming those bonds, it does mean something. And this is something that could end up flourishing. And it, this is something I think Tiffany needs to, I think she's going to have to make this decision very soon. Does she want to move forward with Kinsey as her number one? Or does she want to move forward with um, Q as her number one? I don't see this being another Tika three alliance where the tribe gets demolished and then they go to the end or pretty much the end together. I don't see this happening with the Yanu three. I think there's going to be have to be a cut somewhere. And I feel like Q's time is coming. I don't know. Uh, yep. I don't, I don't see Q getting to the end. I don't know. I feel like he's just, he his, and I feel, I feel the buildup, even in tonight's episode, we saw Charlie talk about Q. We saw Tiff talk about Q. We saw Kenzie talk about Q. I feel like they are trying to like prepare us um, for a future episode. So I don't know. I don't know if Q's going to make it. Little, little bit of foreshadowing. Definitely could. Uh, Captain Obvious in the chat 
Tiffany is for sure winning the season. She's in the best spot, plus getting the best winners at it. I know she is on a lot of people's boards as the possible winner this season. So you might be on to something there. The last thing I'll say about this group and this tribal council, there was two emotional exits tonight. And we had a, a, quite a few emotional moments in general. But my heart broke, again, putting myself in that situation for Tim when he was like, all right, much love, guys. He went out with a smile, but just to see him stop halfway on the path yeah. and break down, you saw him immediately break down. And knowing that this guy, you know, he's got, I don't know how many kids he has, but he has a beautiful family back home. And in that moment, I could just feel his like, kind of that. It's your dream. Sorrow. Yeah, yeah. It's and your, it was it's your dream. And they never did an edit like that. I had, I, I, even in the moment, I was like, oh, I was like, they never stopped I, I, that I can remember. I can't and remember. Called on the bridge. They follow people out, but I've never, I never remember seeing people stop on the bridge. So that was a sweet moment. And it was refreshing to see his, um, his exit confessional too, when he came back on and he had a, a smile again, but that was definitely heartbreaking because it's such a shock. It really is such like you like you it's had the these, worst time to go out. The worst yeah. time because you're right before the, the jury. I was I was getting ready to say and he didn't make the jury either. So that was super tough. I know that was super tough for him. Yeah, it was it was devastating. Just the fact that you could hear him breaking down. So Tim, we love you. It was yeah. nice to see you go. And then on the flip side of things, we have to talk about this other tribe team, whatever you want to, however you want to look at it. And again, forgive me, I'm going to try to rattle off these names. So it's Maria's immune. She's got her main ally, her number one in Charlie, and then four NAMI members in Tevin, Liz, Soda, and Venus. And we've talked a lot about the Venus situation where she's going around trying to get people to work with her. No one is, but she's throwing out Tevin's name. She wants to take a shot at Tevin. And then she was like, you know what? I'm okay going Soda. I either want Tevin or Soda. She's trying to get Maria. She's trying to get Charlie. Neither one of them. Charlie has a little interest, but Maria's not interested whatsoever. And then you have, this was the most shocking moment to me. Tevin first started off saying, I would love to take a shot at Venus. This is the time to take Venus out of the game. That's how he started. And then we get this scene with him and Liz where he goes, what if we get soda out? Because we can see the game that Venus is playing where, you know, she's disloyal. No one's really working with her where soda is playing a more laid back kind of hidden game. And we can make a shocking elimination here. Mariah, this was a shocking moment for me. I was not shocked because he's been kind of talking about it in previous episodes. He's been alluding to the fact like that buildup. I, it definitely started happening about an episode or two ago uh before the what are we calling it murgatory happened yeah the murgatory before, situation before the murgatory happened he was on the beach and he was giving a confessional and he was talking about how he felt like soda was being too buddy buddy with everyone he was like i kind of feel like me and soda are drifting apart because every time i look up she's talking to this person she's talking to that person she's talking mm, to this person good yes so he was talking about how he started to feel like he was drifting from soda and how he was like she might have to go but it was too it was in a confessional. And I think that this was the first time that we saw him bring those plans to life to other people. So I feel like that was the shocking part, but I wasn't super shocked at hearing the plan because I knew he had been feeling that way for a while from other episodes. Um, I just didn't know if he was going to be able to pull it off, but actually, you know, I, I did because I was like, you, so does a threat. Like who wouldn't want to go along with that plan other than probably Venus. <laughs> like, well, but, and then we and then we heard from Liz. Well, the weird thing is Venus did end up saying like she ended with saying, let's just go soda. So the plans kind of merged in a sense. And it was really interesting seeing when Tevin brought this up to Liz, we get a Liz confessional of her saying, yes, I love this. Soda has been like my number one target this entire game. I definitely want to get her out. I'm so down for this. This is where I was like, okay, editing crew. Where has this been? This is the first time we that heard we've her heard saying that soda yeah. is the number one threat. I was like, okay, this came out of nowhere. Yeah. And I'm like, I feel bad for Liz because I want to know more about Liz's game and where she lies. Because for me right now, Liz, I'm is hoping they bo they're bottling it up. I really hope that they are. I'm hoping that we have 
I was wondering if that would possibly, because I feel like tonight a lot of people noticed it. And I'm like, does that mean next episode Liz is going to have like a Liz explosion? Like, are we going to get like a full episode? A Liz explosion? Where yeah, like, are you I coming like, up? <laughs> I feel like we can coin that term. <laughs> let's not coin Zeke's for Twitter, but or X. Where but let's coin a Liz explosion. Amazing. I feel like we're going to get that in the next episode. <laughs> the next episode is titled Liz Explosion. And if it's not, I'm no longer watching. I'll just reach out to the editing team. I'll get on it. <laughs> have them fix it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I definitely hope to get a Liz Explosion. Because that's one thing that hurts me with like casual fans is a lot of time. Like people will twist it and be like who was liz like she's not a good player what we don't know she could be yeah. the best player out there we're just not seeing her game and that's a that's someone i want to see more of her game i want mm -hmm. to see where her thoughts are i don't even know her number one ally but from what i'm reading into it i believe that she believes her number one ally is tevin in a sense, we've seen them talk a couple times there's mm -hmm. an episode pre-merge where tevin and hunter we're talking about a plan where if we lose, let's vote out Venus. And the first person they went to was Liz and Tevin was actually the one who brought it up over Hunter. So I almost feel like if I'm reading past the edit correctly, I almost feel like Liz thinks her number one ally is Tevin, but I don't know that, if that's the way street. I, I, I had not thought about that, but now that you bring that up, it makes me think about how, their conversation definitely did seem so easy. Like it wasn't like a, like Tevin didn't really hesitate. He came right no. out and said it to her. Like he was super comfortable. So now that you say that, I'm like, actually they might be really close because normally when you're bringing a name to someone you don't talk to that often, you kind of like got to prep them. You got to give a little bit of a disclaimer. You kind of got to like read where their head is at. You probe them a little bit. But with this, he kind of just sat down on the sand and was like, thinking soda and she was like i'm down that's what i've been wanting to do too so i think you might be actually reading that relationship right maybe she does view tevin as her number one the most shocking thing i know we talked about stuff that shocked me and stuff that shocked you but let's talk about the fact that yes soda was the one who went home we get this emotional elimination this was also heartbreaking because i could tell that she was frustrated heartbroken and shocked all in one emotion because the tears yeah. started flowing and you could hear it in her voice when she turned around and she was fully crying. Oh, there was one shot. I'm going to go back and look at it. It was probably my favorite shot of the season. It was a super clear camera on soda and you just saw all the tears. And I was like, yeah. that is, that's what it means to love this game so much. Yeah. And she almost said she was, she said in a way where she's like, have fun guys. And it was like, she was trying to be nice, but she was also like furious at the same time. And mm -hmm. this, she said, she looked at Venus and goes, this was you and Venus with a smile. Love you girly. Yes, it was. So, you I know, Venus is gonna, no. you, know you know, she's going to own up to us and oh, own up to that being her move at the end of the game. But Tevin whispered, no, as you said, Mariah. So I was thinking, yeah, that was Tevin's move, but Tevin voted venus hmm. that's what confuses me because the votes were maria charlie uh Mar yeah so no who did soda vote for soda voted venus so it was soda maria no sorry maria charlie liz and venus voted for soda soda and tevin voted for Venus. That's how the votes were split up. So sorry, it took me a second there. That's oh, so I know weird. why Tevin did that. And I could be wrong. Because she's the first juror. Ooh. So he's, he's already doing jury management. Yes. Which would be genius. Yep. So I think that that is that. And he might actually let Venus take the credit until final tribal council if he makes it there. But I, I think that that is why he voted Venus. That's the only other reason that makes sense. It, uh, Nikki adds in the chat here, Tevin just mad Venus owns the vote. I mean, that's yeah. going to be something. I love that. I love the whole he's managing the jury. It will be interesting to see for if we are, if we're living in a world where the final three involves Tevin and Venus, which would be something in itself. 
<laughs> it would be interesting to see who can own up to that move. Cause that's mm -hmm. probably, I guarantee Venus is looking at that as her biggest move of the game. She finally mm -hmm. got her big move. Over. Oh, we're going to hear her talking about it all next episode. Oh, <laughs> for sure. We're going to hear her talk <laughs> all about it. But if Tevin comes out and is like, look, I was actually the one that got soda out. How are you going to say that when, she, you know, she could easily be like, no, you voted for me that, that's what could be interesting. See, this is stuff, if you are a casual fan, this is why you have to look past the edit. You have to really analyze what's going on to appreciate how hard these players are playing. And what I will say is the reason why I think that it works for Tevin is because if he wrote her name down, that causes like such an emotional blow that I feel like you can't come back from. She would have left more pissed, more heartbroken, animosity, like no way I want, or I should say the possibility, because there's always a possibility you don't leave angry at your at the people who voted you out at all, like I did. Um, but like, that was like a opportunity for her to be like, absolutely under no Turk circumstances is Tevin winning on my watch. He's a snake, he voted me out. But the fact that he didn't put her name down didn't leave any salt in the wounds. And even if Venus tries to claim that as her move, he still has that relationship with Liz. He still has that relationship with Charlie who can back him up at tribal council. So I don't really feel like there's no world. And Maria, I don't really feel like there's a world where Maria, Charlie, and Liz is going to turn around during final tribal council and say, that was me. This vote. I think they're gonna back Tevin up. Um, Ooh, and I mean, he managed, yeah, we saw the talks. Yeah, and, and managed to like not get salt in the wound when uh when Soda went home. So I don't know, it might work in his favor in the long run. Mariah, I like the way you're thinking. That would oh. be such a genius. You're you're on fire tonight. You've got oh my the God. amazing takes, you have the amazing phrases. Stop. I mean, Ab <laughs> what is Abraham bringing? Oh, stop, no. <laughs> Oh, oh my God. You're going to have Abraham sending me hate now. <laughs> uh, he will listen to this. We love you, Abraham. We do, Abraham. We do. You know I love you, man. I, I'm <laughs> very excited to have you back. Nikki adds on, ooh, jury management, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it definitely could be. Well, I mean, I think we've we've covered everything. This was a great episode. You know, we yeah. had members of the cast. We had former players keep saying earlier on in, in the season when everyone was hating on the season, myself included, everyone was, you know, I'll out myself. Yes. Uh, everyone <laughs> was like, pump the brakes, give them time to, to make this work. And the season Mariah really feels like it's starting to, to take off. It's definitely sizzling. It's like when the bacon, is it not yet crispy, but you can like, see it getting there like i feel like the bacon's like almost done we can't quite taste it yet but we're beginning to smell it and it's getting me excited so i'm pumped there's one last important thing i think that this might have been the most important detail of the entire episode for me personally like we just we can't end without me talking about this the most iconic moment of tonight's episode was when Kenzie walked into tribal council wearing her buff as a mother effing bow. Oh, like yes. I'm just like yes. uh, God smacked. Like I'm just like <laughs> oh how do you turn this into a bow? It's amazing. And I'm just so irritated because the amount of fashion that I would have did with my buff if I was on that island longer at that, at honestly, I would have made Jeff give me three more. I would have said, give me three more buffs. So I can make a dress. Like I'm just, I'm just going to have to just make buff outfits in my, out of my house at this point. But that bow, I was just, stunned in the best way possible it was incredible yeah i seriously i seriously don't understand mariah i love that you shouted that out thank let you get, let me get mine and see if i can make it into a bow i was gonna say we're gonna have how do you turn does anyone in the comments know how do you turn this I into a bow? where's my buff where's my buff where's my buff i i genuinely 
I'm just going to okay, look. Okay, I have it. Let me see now if I can turn my buff into a bow. I, I would be like, I don't know. This might have to be an outfit that I wear to work tomorrow or something. Like, am I wearing my buff as a yeah. bow tomorrow? I completely messed up my hair some, somehow putting on that buff. <laughs> I had I need some additional tools, but I think I figured it out. Only on the Survivor Now podcast are you going to get a podcast that is no longer about Survivor, but how to wear a buff. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so let me do, now I'm going to do my hair up and I'm going to put it on and let me see if I figured it out. My cat is like screaming at me. I know we got to get you a buff too. Let me see. Let me see if it's Kenzie approved. But like now, I'm just like I have to wear my buff as a bow, like all day, every day now. Okay, so my hair is in a ponytail. If you I'm guys aren't watching the Survivor Now podcast, what are you doing? Did I do a good job? Oh my gosh! Yes. <laughs> How did you do that? I think I, think I made it happen. Hold on, I have to fix it in my in my real mirror. The cat is going crazy. She loves it. <laughs> She's going crazy. The cat is like approving it. I think I did it. Can we I get uh, can we get confirmation uh, if you are watching Kinsey? <laughs> because I'm definitely posting this on Instagram and I'm tagging her. Do we have do we have it correct? I I think. I think I did a good job. I think I'm proud. My cat is also seems to be like approving. I did like a ponytail thing. I <laughs> is that is that? I love it. You said you said forget the bow. I'm gonna try to do a bow. There's no <laughs> way I'm doing the bow. <laughs> I. <laughs> this is my favorite part of the show. You said, you said forget the bow. I'm just gonna do it. You said I'm gonna do a messy bun. I did. That's what I did. I did. A... That's why I missed how you did the bow. That's why I was like, "How did you do that?" Because I was over here trying to figure out how I can do a messy bun with my bow. I absolutely love it. I treated oh it. I don't know if you saw it, but I put it back like it was hanging off. And then I literally treated it like hair. Like I took it off and I was like. I, I love it. I love I think, it. I think if I ever go on the show, this is how I'm wearing my butt. Oh my God. Please do. Please. I'm going to hold you to it. I don't know if anyone's done a messy bun, but I'm definitely. Yeah. So we have. Well, I had. I just. I hope Bryce doesn't. Doesn't call me or text me. But like my favorite has been, you know, the iconic Bryce way to wear it, right? Like kind of like I forget what what way are you talking about? <laughs> okay, so I have to look it. Up. I have to look it up now because you should know this. But he like wears it as like a a hood. It's almost kind of like a hoodie hood. Why it's can like, I not remember this? Oh my god! So I have three. I have three ways, and now it's kind of like my top one. Um, over the bow, you're taking it over the bow. No, the bow is now number one. So Bryce okay. was number one, and it just got knocked down. Oh, um, <laughs> sorry. Wait, but, what's your least favorite way to wear a buff? <sighs> just as a as like a good question. As a bracelet, that seems pretty no, because the bracelet is comfortable. I wore mine as a bracelet a lot. Um, maybe around the neck. But oh, I, yeah. I do like the neck still, but I think it's, I don't dislike the neck, but I feel like it's just my least favorite way, I guess. What about but, as like a top or skirt? Either of those? Oh, that's my third. Of? Stephanie wearing it as a top. Yep. And oh, then who redid it? Brando. Um, Brando, yeah. Brando doing Brando it. for it, yeah. <laughs> I, oh my gosh, this is going to kill, like this is nuts that I can't find, um, Call, Bryce Bryce doing? Call, call. He's, at, he's at the event. You just need to call up Bryce is what you need to do. Yeah, I need to call up Bryce to say, where is this um, this photo? Oh, I got a thousand. Okay. Are you ready for this? Yes, yes. I Yes. Because if this isn't... <laughs> this was my number one for the longest. Till now. 
And now it's the bow. So Bryce has fallen into number two. And then my other one is Stephanie uh, wearing it as a top. Um, because yeah, she, she just she took, that from, she took that from Brando. <laughs> She's such a thief. Uh, she totally stole it. And I'm just now realizing like how many times she did it. Like just iconic. Oh. Just, what a star. What a, what a star. I love but Stephanie I also... so much. Can we just talk about that really quick? I love <laughs> Stephanie. Oh, Stephanie's incredible. Oh my gosh. She literally was a one woman tribe. Cut it out. Like that is a one woman tribe, but that, and also, uh, wearing it as a skirt, <laughs> wearing it as a skirt was very Power underrated. Move. Am I doing a styling my buff series now? I think I have to do that. So this summer we're going to have a fire making showdown between Mariah <laughs> and Abraham. And then uh, we're also going to have a bonus episode where all we do for about two or three hours is discuss. You know what? That would be so fun. Have an entire episode where we just model buffs. Like these are the different ways you can model your buff. A buff, a, a buff fashion show. But Bryce has to be a guest on that podcast. 1000%. We're going to make this happen. I'm very excited. Yeah. No, that one actually might happen. I kind of like that <laughs> idea. Well, I think we've talked about everything. We got a few more things I have to let you guys know about what's happening on Survivor now this week. So if you did enjoy this episode of us chatting about you know, I don't know about this show Survivor, but we talked about buffs. We talked about cats. If you enjoyed all of that <laughs> stuff, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. You can check out all of our stuff on our website, SurvivorNowPodcast.com. Uh, obviously, today I had the wonderful pleasure of being joined by Mariah. Yesterday, I was joined on the pre-show by someone else on our season. The winner of season 43, Mike Gabler himself was on the show. Go back. He even though the episode has already aired, go check it out because Gabler lets us know what he's thought about everything that's happened this season. He gives us winner pick, talks about the castaways. Tomorrow night, 9 p.m. Eastern on Survivor Social, we will be joined by Lauren Harp from season 44 of Survivor. So she will be joining Kara and Tegwith. That will be a super fun show. And then on Friday, we have Survivor Stockwatch. Jack and Will will lead our power ranking show and let you know which castaways are flying up the ranks and could end up winning the season and which castaways, maybe Q, might be out the door very <laughs> soon. And then on Saturday, to wrap us all up, uh, Survivor Castaway, Survivor 44 Castaway, Austin Lee Coon will join the Got Something For You crew. Uh, as they recap every single thing that happened on the episode, they take you still by still talking about every moment in great detail. And that will wrap up our episode seven coverage. So uh, let me get the right layout here. Mariah, once again, thank you so much for jumping on with me. It was so last minute this week and, and filling in for Abraham. The position is yours at this point. But, you know, and I'll be serious, waiting for my I'll, I'll be I'll stay up tonight until I receive the contract. <laughs> in all seriousness, you know, you always have an open invitation to come on. And and this was a fun one today. We this had a lot of the, fun. This was the best episode to come back and chat with you with. And my cats joined in, which was totally fun. We had a fashion show. We talked about a lot. It was awesome. <laughs> yeah, my cat never came back. She was right here when the podcast was starting, clawing at my feet. And then I was like, she walked away and I was like, ooh, now I need my cat. And then never came she back. She ran oh. off. She got terrified of that fire making challenge. She knew she couldn't pull out a win. <laughs> Super terrified. And we we know how cats are. You're on their time. It's not yep. the other way yep. around. <laughs> so thank you guys for tuning in. And we'll catch you guys next week.